All right, good afternoon and welcome. We are here in studio today talking sports. First time of 2024. Got a lot to talk about here. We took a week off and hope everybody enjoyed the holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Steve Al, and uh, haven't seen you for a while, so good to good to see you and be back here in the studio. We need to start out by talking about Casey Gaynor. Are you familiar with this name? No. Casey Gaynor officiated is a Indiana high school Ref, a basketball official. He officiated okay. a game at Indianapolis Heron the other night. Yes. He has now officiated a game at every high school gym in the state. Yes. I, I, I'm familiar with the story. I did not remember the name, but yes. That's... That is an I looked at the picture of the Indianapolis Star. He looked kind of familiar. I, I, I imagine I've run into him before at some point. Sure we have, yeah. But kudos to Casey Gaynor. Yeah. Every gym in the state. And he... Now, first of all, what I would want to know is uh, maybe I was a little skeptical as to how do you can you prove it? Yeah, but apparently he's kept a log of every gym that he's been to, and ri- so if you said, "Hey, when did you officiate a game at Pioneer?" Mm-hmm. He could he could look it up. Apparently, apparently it's yeah, and that you know with all these new schools, these new charter schools and stuff like that, it's yeah. like boy, that is a that is a difficult task. He claims that he's even like if a school has torn down their old gym and built a new gym, he said he's officiated a game at the new gym. Really? So it's a, it's a fairly up to date. So it's fairly up to date, yeah. yeah. Huh. But he kind of explained it was interesting in Kyle Nedrip's story in the Indianapolis Star, he kind of explained like how do you I mean, first of all, you have to get on kind of the radar of the um uh, Different officials, organizations. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, and there are different assigners. So, I mean, how do you get on? How do you get a game at Winnemac? Mm-hmm. How do you get a game at Evansville Bossy? Right. How do you get a game at Fort Wayne Dwenger? Right. So you have to know certain people, and you have to have a certain reputation as a, being a good official. He's never officiated a state championship game before. The man deserves a state championship <laughs> game, I would think. Right. He talked about. He said his favorite gym to officiate is Newcastle. Yeah. He said one of his favorite experiences was officiating a regional at Hingle Fieldhouse. Hmm. You see the the sunlight come through the, the ceiling mm-hmm. at 10 a.m. on a Saturday, and the crowd's packed. And he goes, "That was an awesome experience." But yeah, kudos to him. Yeah, yeah, that's a great accomplishment. How many how many gyms did it did they say? Did they say the total number? Well, there are 400 school about 400 IHSA schools, so they didn't give an exact number, but it's yeah, probably it's at least that, right? Right. And he yeah. said he's he said he's officiated a game at like Hoosiers Gym in Knightstown before mm-hmm. as well, so he, could, he said he had that one covered too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, New Prairie and Glenn just had a doubleheader down there last night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Well, let's get going here with uh, with what we got to talk about. A lot of stuff going on here. Let's get started with the Rochester Zebras. Um, the boys, you know, didn't have a great uh, holiday tournament at Wawasee. They went 0-2, but uh, wow, what a win last night at home against uh, Whitco. You were there. We got some highlights from that one. I mean, that was uh, a little bit of a shock, wasn't it? Right, and I kind of, if you read my article at rtc4sports.com, it explains kind of the backstory of this game. They lost twice at at Wawasee and didn't play great again. There was good competition certainly against Wawasee and Fort Wayne Dwenger, and then they had a terrible. They had such a terrible practice on Tuesday that Coach Malco was thinking about kicking them out of practice. Right. But then he he just decided to, he went back to his office and he actually decided to change his mind, kept him out there. And said, so what we're going to do is just press each other full court. Just get after it. Mm-hmm. And he, they finally played with some, like, energy. And, and it was to the point, and this was Tuesday. And remember, there, there was no school on Tuesday, so they were practicing in the middle of the day. Yeah. Rex Reinholdt, who's an assistant coach, has a day job. So he wasn't at practice on Tuesday. So the, the, the last 30 minutes of practice when Malco has them pressing up and down worked so well that Malco calls Reinhold on the phone, and he goes, here's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And Reinhold and Malco worked on a practice plan to add more. Uh, they put two extra presses into the into the lineup, and it wasn't. It was more like a run and jump type press instead of a full court all out press. And boy, the the intensity and the energy was so much better. And you know, it, it was funny. The first like possession of the game, Sam Asijan of Whitco just drives right down the basket for an easy layup. Mm. And Randy and Wynn and I look at each other like, boy, this is going to be a long night. After that, the defense was sensational, and Rochester really, this was, they were really, they played aggressively and confidently the rest of the night. 
Yeah, if you recognize that name, Asesian, his brother was a uh, star at Central Noble, and uh, is he still at Wisconsin? He is a Badger still, yeah. yeah. yeah so. But Asesian averages 15 a game, and Rochester held him to 9 last night. Yeah. Uh, Kyler Kroll averages 21 a game. He had 20 last night, so... Let's uh, uh, let's take a look here yeah. and talk about uh, the highlights here of this one. It was a uh, good game last night for the Rochester Zebras. It was interesting because Coach Malko it was talking about we're going to make some changes, but he he was very he was very vague. He didn't want to give away his plan. But then he said we're going with the same starting lineup. That's the uh, play you were talking about there with right. The it's like oh boy, yeah, that was too easy. But then after that, it was so much better. There is Drew Bowers with a steal in a bucket, and again Drew is. He just knows what you're. Do- he knows what everybody's doing a second before everybody else. That's the three pointer by Bryce Bogger that put Rochester up seven to six. They never trailed again after that. And here's another big three by Tanner Reinerts. Again, Bauer is getting into the lane, kicking out. That put Rochester up twelve to nine with about thirty three seconds to go in the first quarter, and they stayed ahead the rest of the game. This one the here, great right. pass by. I had to. You see it here. I had to slow this one down. That was a beautiful pass from Bowers. Bowers to. Prater, how much space, maybe a sliver of space to fit that pass in, and he gets it there. And a good finish there by Owen Prater as yeah. well. You know, the thing that I noticed uh, in making this highlight video was the number of Rochester players that were hitting threes last night. I mean, different players hitting big-time shots. Right. And there's uh, Kaiser. Seven threes, that's Jonas Kaiser with a big three. That put him up by eight. This was part of a 9-0 run. And that was a pull-up jumper, and Coach Benedict called timeout after that. I put Rochester up by 12 at 23-11. Wabash got it to, like, to 23-17. I thought that shot was big by Jack Reffitt. About 20 seconds to go in the half. I thought they would wait till the end of the half before shooting. but So it's kind of one of those where if you shoot it at that point, you better make it, and he <laughs> did. And then the, the two two more big threes right in a row early in the third quarter. That put a, that made a 32-18. Um. Rochester scored nine points in the third quarter, all on threes. That was another triple by Bogger that made it 35-21. Then the last six points of the quarter were scored by Whitco. That's uh, crawled, uh, kind of a high-low play. He misses the first shot, but he puts back his own miss and gets fouled. So leads back down to eight to start the fourth quarter. And you, Again, maybe if you're a Rochester fan, you're worried about here we go, but nope. Zebras had it all the way. That's a big bucket by Prater. And then Pollock gets behind the... Carson Pollock gets behind the defense for a bucket. Rochester did not attempt a free throw until 3 minutes and 21 seconds to go in the game, but they wound up going 9 for 12 as Whitco had to foul, and a siege and eventually fouled out with 6.6 seconds to go. Rochester wins 54-39. to 39. They never trailed after the first quarter. Just a lot of really good yeah. things to take out of that game. You right. know, Owen Prater, I, he is so good at finishing at the bucket off of two feet mm-hmm. and finishing strong. I mean, there are a couple yeah. plays there where you saw, you know, with that – one with the pass from uh, Bowers, and uh, you know you just gotta you just gotta hand it to Drew Bowers. I mean mm-hmm. he is in complete control of that offense. Yeah, you look at it; it was like fourteen points. It was like, wow, Drew had fourteen, and mm-hmm. he just kind of take it for granted mm-hmm. that he's going to do that. And I mean he's just, you know, I talked with Rob Malco afterwards. He said he's he's he has some of those Bruce Grimm type instincts. I mean he's not the He's not the shooter or scorer that that Bruce is, but he's got, he you know Bruce kind of had that. He knew where you were passing the ball before you knew you were passing the ball. Yeah. And he gets a couple steals like that, and some of his you know his passes are just really on point, and he knows how to get the ball there. And then, but you know, Rochester played thirteen guys last night. Whitco played six. Mm-hmm. Now that's not that doesn't mean one team's going to win and another team's going to lose, but Coach Malco was definitely. That was part of the plan too. We're going to play a lot of guys. If you get if you get tired, we're taking you. We're going to, we're going to take you out of the game. You, you should get tired. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Uh, Jonas Kaiser with five big, you know, five big points. He had a great JV tournament. A while we'll see. He got rewarded with some varsity minutes. We saw the three pointer that he had. That yeah. finish he had when he he basically left handed finish off the glass. That was a thing of beauty. I mean, that was a high degree of difficulty shot that he made. He's going to be a contributor. All four of the sophomores who played, you know, really helped out. Grant Clark was the only one who didn't score, and Grant's a big body who's going to be, he's going to be a good player eventually. Yeah. 
So the Zebras have a week to prepare. They will be on the road next Friday at Lewis Cass. So they got a little time here to... Oh, the guys The guys know about Lewis Cass. I mean, that was the team that knocked them out of sectional last year. They will be ready for that one. It's a different type of Lewis Cass team. Obviously, new coach with Coach Johnson leaving and Coach uh, Brands taking over. You know, Luke Chambers and Tyson Good graduated. They don't have the size that they had. It's going to be more of a guard-oriented team. But again, just as a point of comparison, Lewis Cass lost to Logansport by one. Rochester lost to Logansport by 15 at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. So this is a... You know, L.J. Hillis is a big load for the... He's a big... Yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to be a big problem. Yeah. We heard they had some injury issues okay. uh, uh, recently. So, uh, But again, that's that's eight days from now. So for all we know, they're going to get well between now and then. So, yeah. And yeah. again, that's also where the sectional is going to be yeah. at gym. So. Yep. Yeah. But again, point of comparison, uh, Whitco beat... Uh, Wallace, Whitco beat... Wallace C. Whitco beat Columbia City... Whitco beat Columbia City. Columbia City beat Valley by 14. Valley beat Rochester by 40. <laughs> Rochester just beat Whitco. Yeah. So we, and I think I tweeted that last night, yeah. this yeah. is a crazy season, but it just goes to show you what it means if you if you are prepared and you play with energy, what you are capable of doing. Yeah, yeah. On the girls' side of things, they uh, are 9-8 and eight right now, still 5-0 and oh in conference play. They won the small school tournament at North White. Uh, so a good uh, good win there for the the girls and coach uh, Burris uh, mm-hmm. did lose um, on Wednesday night at home to Plymouth 3944 um, you were at that tournament you want to talk just briefly about the uh, North white tournament here yeah they, they beat Coutts in the first round 42 35 they led by 16 in the fourth quarter Coutts went to a one three one press in the fourth quarter cut a 16 point lead down to six. But it didn't get too scary. Ella McCarter was f- fantastic in that game. She had five threes and scored 21 points. I talked with Coach Schwartz from Kyle's after the game. He was like, we looked at the film. We didn't see – we knew about McCarter, but we didn't see her shoot that many threes. I mean, right. she was just on fire. There was one three that hit the rim and bounced like five times and went in. It was just Ella's – it was Ella's night. Yeah. And then uh, I think seven points apiece for Clevenger and Wilson. Uh, again, the, the the ball handling was a little shaky in the fourth quarter. Kyle's has a really nice freshman post player named Ellie Nemeth. She's, um, they didn't list heights in the program. She looked up, she was about 5'10", 5'11", really could finish. Kyle's really liked that high-low play, get the ball to the high post, and then dump it down to Nemeth. But once Rochester kind of pinched down in that play, Kyle's offense was inconsistent, and they couldn't really, they couldn't hit shots from the Mm -hmm. outside. So that was a nice win. Then Rochester beat North White 29-18. Coach Burris wasn't expecting to play North White, and why would you? Since North White had gone into the tournament 0-13, but they went... They improved to one and thirteen after a nice win over Clinton Prairie in the first round. Autumn Rife, we've I know we've seen her play before. Mm-hmm. She had twenty eight and fifteen rebounds against Clinton Prairie. Only had ten and eight against Rochester. And even though ten and eight is a game a lot of kids would kill for, mm-hmm. uh, North White needed even more than she has to do. She a has lot. to yeah. do a lot for yeah. that team. Uh, and again, that's a North White team. They're, they don't have any seniors, so there are no seniors in that game at all. Mm-hmm. But they don't. Um, they they have a ton of guards, but they don't shoot the ball very well. Mm-hmm. And you know, again, their zone they're, they're getting the hang of their zone. Uh, they have improved defensively. Uh, again, Rochester only able to put up twenty nine points on the board, but again, they just don't have enough offensive firepower to score against Rochester's zone. Yeah, nice little tournament there. It sounds like it uh, is going to happen again next year, probably at Couts. That's what we've. Yeah. That's kind of the what we've yeah. heard. And for Coach Bruce's one hundredth career win, I think I broke it down in my article. He's, 65 it was uh, 65 of his 100 wins came as the Trinity Greenlawn boys coach mm-hmm. and I have got 20 wins at Rochester. Yeah. So again I I don't think uh that's how John Harrell kind of breaks it down right. and he breaks it down separate girls and boys but yeah it's 100 wins combined girls and boys mm-hmm. for uh coach Burris. So the uh Zebras were back at home for the first uh, game of 2024 against the Plymouth Pilgrims and right now, I would argue Rochester played better against Plymouth than they did in the small school classic. Yeah, and you know this is a team uh, Rochester has beat the last two years. They went up to uh, Plymouth and, and won that game last year on the road. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, if anything, I will talk about it here. But you know, there's a nice <laughs> move, Riley uh, Clevenger. Just nobody turned around, mm-hmm. and uh, she takes it all the way to the basket. And 
you know, Ella McCarter was uh, was doing uh, Ella McCarter things early in this game. Right. She won tournament MVP honors at the small school classic. She had 21 against Cops, 9 against North White, and she had 6 in the first half of this game. And you can see why Ella's such a tough cover, because she can hit the 3, but she can also put the ball on the floor and score. Riley Clevenger has really impressed me this year. I mean, she has gotten so much better at not only you know taking it in to the mm -hmm. 10, 15 foot range and hitting shots, but she's more willing to take uh, jumpers with people in her face and, and she's hitting them. Right, and her ball handling I think is key to that. Mm -hmm. Her ball handling is much improved. She she makes good decisions. Yeah. Uh, Plymouth, you know, I thought the last 30 seconds of the first half was big. Rochester was down 18-15, had a shot to get it down to one or maybe even tie it. But it said they uh, Wilson picks uh, Aubrey Wilson picked up her third foul. Plymouth gets a bucket late. They go up by five. They actually led by eight in the third quarter. And this is when Rochester makes their run. Yeah, it was a big three there by Clevenger. Clevenger hits a three to make it 23-18. And then all of a sudden, Rochester became a team full of rebounding beasts. Yeah. You you can tell, uh, you know, when Aubrey Wilson went out with her foul trouble, you can tell that it's a little bit of a struggle for them. I mean, she has really solidified herself as the, you know, the point guard for this team. And mm -hmm. she just handles the ball and, you know, gets them into their sets. Yeah, and Aubrey's only become a more productive score. Boy, Jaden Field, uh, she has really picked up her game. I mean, you can tell just by the body language and kind of that look in her eyes. It's like she wants the ball now. You don't even you don't even think about it. I mean, Jaden Field and, and Aubrey Wilson are freshmen. Yeah. I mean, you hardly even you hardly even think. You know, well, they're just freshmen. They're just freshmen. They're they don't play like freshmen. Right. The player that uh, Jaden has been compared to often is Lexi Thomas, mm -hmm. but Jaden is further along as a freshman than Lexi Thomas was. I would Lexi, agree. Lexi was just getting kind of a taste of varsity minutes by the time of January, her freshman year. Jaden has played a lot more minutes, and you can tell she's just getting more comfortable. But again, Plymouth just kept making shots. Lena Jones hit a big three. Um, there, that was kind of a mistake by Plymouth to let Cle give Clevenger an open look for three with 14 seconds to go. That made it 42 39. But they made two big free throws, and then this turnover would seal the deal as Plymouth would win it 44 to 39. Lena Jones led the way with 11. Sophie Miller had 10. And um, uh, yeah, uh, Riley Mann had 10 as well. So, mm -hmm. balanced scoring for Plymouth, that's how they've done it all year. So, uh, but they won 44 39. I, I still think Rochester played better. I, again, it, it wasn't a lack of effort at all. Rochester played hard, but just Plymouth made all the... just seemed like whenever Rochester would get on a run, Plymouth would make a big shot. Yeah. Of course, for the Lady Zebras, the big ones coming up on Saturday as they head up to South Whitley to take on Whitco, who uh, has that one conference loss, so 4-1 and one in the conference, and Rochester, you know, can go a long ways to uh, solidifying their place in the conference if they can get this win on the road at Whitco. Whitco averages 56 points a game. Rochester allows only 36 Obviously, it's got to be closer to the 36 than the 56. Right. Uh, but if it comes to shoot up, but again, curious to see how Whitco does against the zone. Are they going to be licking their chops? But maybe they haven't faced Rochester zone. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, Lady Z's. I, I think if they can get points in the paint, and I, I'm, I'm very curious to see if Whit Whitco's a good rebounding team. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't seem to like physical play when we saw them play last year, but they're all a year older. Mm -hmm. So maybe they'll they'll adapt to that physical play. They've got to keep Field and Bowlinger off the boards. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a bigger Rochester team than what they faced last year. Right. You know they didn't have Field, they didn't have Mullinger, so right. you know what what's this going to look like? It's going to yeah. be interesting. And can can Rochester keep up with the pace? Can they slow Whitco down because mm -hmm. Whitco's going to want to go 100 miles an hour? Yeah. But again, Rochester got 15 points combined from Field and Bowlinger. Boy, I mean if they. If you had told me that before the game, I thought I would have thought they would have won. Mm -hmm. uh, if they can continue to get 15 a game from those two, they're going to become very competitive against just about anybody on their schedule. Yeah. They had two Logan Sport on Wednesday in a non-conference matchup. Uh, the Berries, you know, struggling this year. They only have two losses or two wins. 
So, uh, you know, that would be a game there that you would uh, hope that they could pick up a midweek right. non-conference game. Logansport graduated four seniors from last year, including Gabby Ritchie, who was their best player. We saw Lydia Goad play the other day. Boy, I, I'm really impressed by her. Just yeah. plays hard all the time. And yeah. uh, she she's kind of like Riley Clevenger in that she's added a lot to her game. She's we've always We always knew she could shoot, but yeah. she, can, she can do more things than just that. Yeah, a lot of pressure on Goad and then uh, Arison Good, uh, kind of the two players there for Logansport. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the big one coming up, we'll talk about that next week, but they uh, they have Lewis Cass coming into town on Saturday. Yeah. That's, that's the big one for the conference. Right, right. So if they can get that win uh, against Whitco, that would make that game with Lewis Cass even bigger. Yeah. And that would, uh, that would definitely solidify the Zebras' place in this conference. So uh, anything else ba- uh, basketball-wise here? Uh, no, that's about it. I just, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just a, a really head-turning performance by the boys. Yeah, and then the girls again. I, I think they're. I think they're still moving forward. Yeah, even though they lost on 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 Tuesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Not, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. So uh, wrestling, obviously, huge, yeah, huge going ons at the uh, high school this weekend. Uh, actually, as we speak, the girls semi state is uh, being held there at the high school and. Uh, a lot of representation on the girls' semi-state uh, from the Rochester Zebras. Right. They've got eight girls competing um, at the uh, semi-state level. Uh, the only girl who didn't make it, sadly, was uh, Lily, uh, Lily Gerald, who dislocated her elbow at Rensselaer. Boy, what a rough Christmas. That had to beat her for her arm mm. in a sling. But Lily was going to have... Lily is going to... I mean, she's only a sophomore. Thankfully, she's got two years left, but... She was having such a great year. She was wrestling with the boys. She was beating some of the boys. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to really hurt. But again, they had eight, the other eight all made it to semi state, including two regional champions, Lane Pepler and Grace Hirams, who've been ranked in the, among the tops in their weight classes all year. But boy, the, the, I mean, the newcomers, the freshmen, have just put just a bolt of lightning into this team. I mean, Lexi Hawes and Ryland Strasser. Um, and Kyra Doran, and McKenna McKee. I mean, all these girls have just done a fantastic job. Uh, and then you've got uh, Amber Blackburn and Lakota Clevenger made it as well. So all all eight of them made it, all eight of the healthy girls. And not only that, but Rochester won the team title at the Western Regional with 139 points. So, yeah, yeah. again, this is a, a program that... And again, with with such inexperience, I had no idea that they would do that. And without Lily Gerald, they won the regional. Mm-hmm. I mean, so again, you know, Hiram's is graduating, and I think I think Blackburn's graduating, but everybody else. Will, I mean, there's just so much reason to be excited for the future of not only girls wrestling in general, but Rochester girls wrestling. Yeah, and if they uh, advance out of. Uh this week's, they would uh, go to Kokomo, correct, for state? Kokomo for state next Friday. Yeah. So, uh, you know, pretty good chance for uh, several Rochester wrestlers to be going down to Kokomo next week. Right, and we're really keeping an eye on Grace Hirams because she, you know, she was state runner-up last year. Um, the two girl, the two top girls in her weight class are the the girl from New Haven, Bussard, and the girl from Jay County, Winner, Mallory Winner. They're both in the opposite half of the draw for the Grace. So Grace got a good draw. Mm-hmm. So let's see how, if she can take advantage of it because she knows that probably Winner and Buster will be knocking heads. They'll have to face each other. To... Before they get to Grace. Yeah. Of course, Grace lost at the Rochester Invite to Buster in the championship match. Buster got her in a cradle late. So, again, uh, Grace is uh, – I'm just I'm, – I'm, I'm a big fan of hers and – you know, she's really, I think, you know, she had dealt with some minor injury issues early in the year, but I think she's getting healthy now and really looking sharp. Yeah. So that's going and, on. And Lane Pepler, she's just a beast. I, they're just, they're a lot of fun to watch, too. Yeah. So that's going on as we speak over at Rochester High School. And then, if that's not enough to host the uh, girls' semi state tomorrow, the uh, Rochester will be hosting the uh, the boys' team state duels. Uh, the one A team state duels. Oh, yeah, for class one A, Rochester's the number three seed, which means they get a buy. The top four seeds get buys. Adam Central is one, West Central is two, Rochester's three, and Tell City is four. Uh again, Rochester lost to West Central at the Rensselaer duels, lost forty two thirty nine, so that's why West Central leapfrogged them mm-hmm. and is now number two. 
uh, just kind of talking around last night after the basketball game and they were setting up the mats and they were talking about a lot of its matchups, a lot of its, okay, we'll move this guy up a weight class to, to you know, to, because he'll, it'll be an easier win or, or we need to challenge their guy at, the, at this weight class. It really sounds like talking, you know, uh, West Central is a team they could face in the semifinals. Uh, West Central, they're really strong at 132, 138, 144, and that's where Rochester is a l struggling a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, talked with Kale Schatz last night. He's 144 from here on, and he was at 150. But I think he's going to be really good at 144. You know, that, that allows Wyatt Davis to wrestle at 150. Uh, Ethan Amoskita keeps improving at 157. And from 165 through the heavyweight, that is just a murderer's <laughs> row. Yeah. When you talk about Brant Beck, Declan Guard, Colin Wean, Alex Deming, and Brady Beck. That is that is just a nightmare yeah. of of five kids, and so a lot of it. And then you know also a lot of it's, uh, but a lot of it's matchups. So we'll see. They they definitely want West Central again, but yeah, it, you know it was forty two thirty nine when they lost. So there's there's so much difference between a a, a decision and a major decision. Mm -hmm. That's you know a a, a a a fall and a tech fall. I mean. These are these are big deals, so we'll, we'll see how they do. I, I I'm really looking forward to this. Until City is the number four seed, they've kind of been the thorn in the side of the Zebras the last couple of years. Beat Rochester each of the last two years at Team State duels. So yeah. I'm curious to see what kind of crowd comes to this. I mean, obviously <laughs> it's gonna, it's a long way from Tell City, but you know, Adam Central, West Central. Yeah. Um, these are Prairie Heights. I mean, Prairie Heights is not too far. Yeah. Um, it's you know, uh, Faith Christians coming. Mm -hmm. So I'll be curious to see. I mean, the weather is the forecast isn't great, but it should be. I think I think it should hold off. So we'll see how uh, we'll see what, what kind of crowd shows up. I, again, Rochester puts on a great tournament. Yeah, boy, they're gonna have some practice this weekend. Two uh, two great big tournaments going on there at the high school this right. weekend. We believe the Ox Gym will be used just as like a warm up room. Hmm. Uh, but the main they put they they, they laid down four mats in the main gym. Right. So we think that's where mo where all the actual wrestling will take place. Yep. How about the the swimmers? I know they got a big meet coming up next week. We're going to cover on uh, Monday, right? And of course, the first meet after, of course, uh, you know, winter break is the big mileage period of time where they go to usually twice a day, so they're pretty exhausted. And the first meet after winter break is that's never fun when you have to go to Maconaqua because the Braves <laughs> are just good every year. And last yeah. night was no difference, one forty six to thirty six. Maconaqua won the girls meet. And 124 to 60 on the boys' side. The kudos to Jake Cipher who won the 50 freestyle in the boys' meet. Uh, again, that early January, don't look at the times too much because everybody's usually pretty exhausted because they put in a ton of miles. But it's, you know, again, once you get to late January, early February, that's what, you know, the taper starts you know, around like January 20th, 24th. And then they'll start dropping time. Yeah, in big chunks. Yeah, big one uh, coming up Monday with Valley coming to town. With Valley coming to town, that should be it. Should be a fun meet uh, again. The Valley boys. If you have not seen Marcus Smith ever swim, you <laughs> owe it to yourself to take a look. He is just awesome. He's gone to state two years in a row in multiple events. Isaac Whetstone, a big time wrestler as well. Uh, Carson Parker, a really good swimmer as well for Valley. But again, going up against the Rochester guys. I mean. Uh, you know, again, Jake Seifert swam against those Valley kids his whole life. He knows Isaac Whetstone real well. Curious to see how he does, see, see who he matches up against. Yep. Uh, Wes Steininger is familiar with the Valley kids as well. Uh, Tanner Reese has had a great year. Yeah, yeah. Should be a good one. Looking forward to that. Uh, get a chance to get some uh, swimming coverage for you here on Channel 4. So Yeah, I, I know Isaac uh, Whetstone's father, I believe, is the new coach at Valley this year. So Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right, any other Rochester notes? Uh, I think that's all I have. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but, yeah, I think that's all I have. All right. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk some Argus and Caston in our next segment here on Talking Sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships. Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. Stop on by to Inyards Hardware for all your home project needs. 
With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyarts will supply you with the most top-rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyarts Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-4920 to see how Inyarts friendly staff can help you. Paysetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Paysetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.paysettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, the Argus Dragons, setting at three and four. They got right into it uh, in the new year as they took on uh, Trinity Greenlawn at Trinity on Tuesday night, and uh, they won that one 45-43. Good start to their 2024 season. Sorry, I don't have the box one. I don't have the box score on that, but we know that Sean Richard and Luke Stoltz have been really carrying the mail for for Argus this year, and then they're trying to work in the three freshmen mm -hmm. with um, Hellams and. Um, Austin and, and Belden, and then you know if the junior and, and uh, Hayden Hensler is kind of helping out, kind of in the front court. But yeah, a nice win over at Trinity Greenlawn on a Tuesday night. Knowing you know, they, uh, I know talk with Coach Breed and I talked to him before the season. He knew Trinity Greenlawn was going to play 32 minutes of zone, mm -hmm. and that it would be kind of hard. But again, that's an Argus team that can shoot pretty well. So yeah, good win for them on the road. They got a couple more coming up on the road. They go to Bethany Christian tonight. The uh, Bruins are three and seven, and then they go to North Miami on Tuesday to take on the one and eight Warriors. Yeah, this Bethany Christian game is going to be interesting tonight. You know, Argus is two and zero oh in the conference, so uh, can they keep it up tonight? I mean, Bethany Christian has a kid named Tyson Chupp, who, uh, from what I read, I think he's closing in on the Bethany Christian school scoring record okay. for, for, for a career. Yeah. So, and I know he's had big games against Argus in the past. So, again, whatever Argus does defensively is going to be focused on stopping Chupp. Uh, again, Coach Breeden has not been afraid to try things defensively. Uh, again, we know when he saw them play against Argus earlier in the year, or against Pioneer earlier in the year, he, you know, he, they can press. I mean, mm -hmm. kind of what the, the um, you know, Luke Stoltz is because he's so he's six five and he's so mobile. He's just a he's just a real weapon on both, not only on the offensive end but on the defensive end as well. Yeah, and of course, Sean Richard is just you know Mr. Reliable, a point guard. He's he's so strong and tough, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some uh, some road games to start off the uh, the new year for Argus three in a row there before they uh, get right. back and home. They get Chup on t tonight, and they get another really good score in Jake Riley of North Miami on Tuesday night down mm -hmm. in down in Denver. You know that uh, again, North Miami is struggling this year, but Riley can put up twenty against just about anybody, so yeah. they'll have to be ready to go for that one uh, before the you know the OD game coming up on Friday, and then by County, which is. Re Really tough. Argus has to go to John Glenn. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one to start off with at Glenn. So, uh, on the girls' side of things, for the Dragons, six and ten as we start the new year. Kind of a rough, uh, rough go down at Logan over the uh, holiday break. There as they went one and one, losing in the first game to Northwestern, forty nine fifty four. But wow, they had a nineteen point lead in that one. They had a nineteen point lead, and all of a sudden, Northwestern could not miss. For about a quarter and a half. Yeah. I mean, McKenna yeah. Adams was incredible. Oh, my gosh, yes. I mean, and she's she, coming off of an injury. She hadn't played for over a month, I think her mom said. Yeah. Uh, Anna Bashir was great for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, uh, you know, Lexi Hale was a non-factor in the first half. She was much better in the second half. I talked with Scott Jennings after that game. He, he talked a lot about mental toughness. He goes, we just, you know, the, the mental toughness has not been there, and that's kind of the reason why they've been losing these close games. But, uh uh, you know, I mean, and it was just so frustrating because I mean Samantha Redinger had seven threes and scored thirty-seven points. She was 
especially even by Sam's standards in that game. Mm -hmm. But again, just didn't have any answers and came much more turnover prone in the second half. I think Argus had only one turnover in the first half and they had nine in the second half. Yeah, Northwestern, it seemed like they, they ratcheted up the, the pressure there in that second half and right. it really affected the Dragons. And Northwestern, I think, dominated the boards as well. Yeah. I mean, Berkeley Ray and, and uh, Lexi Hale uh, were their two bigs. I mean, yeah. Argus just can't compete with that size-wise. and yeah. um, They seem to get a, a lot of offense. On the rare occasions where they did miss, they seem to get offensive rebounds. Yeah, some foul trouble there mm -hmm. for the Dragons as well. and. So they, they lose that one, but they do come back and get the win 54-50 in the consolation against Logansport. Right, and they were up by 13 in the fourth quarter in that game, and Logansport came back to tie the game in that game. And it was, just, and there, there was kind of this here-we-go-again feeling, but again, Samantha Redinger, I mean, they run that flare screen play, which mm -hmm. is that kind of the bread-and-butter play in Argus's offense, and Borgen Barkas throws it right on a dime to Redinger. It's a big three out of the corner, and that puts them back up 49-46, and and then they run kind of a similar play the next time, and Sam gets fouled while shooting a three. She gets three free throws. She makes them all. And all of a sudden, a tie game is a six-point lead, mm -hmm. and that was kind of what they needed to pull it out. And then there was a big uh, charging foul called. I think it was on was it on Goad in the final minute. That was big. That really sealed the sealed the deal for Argus. But yeah, talking with Coach Jennings after that, I said because I, I asked him, okay, you talked about mental toughness after the Northwestern game. Have you kind of believed you, did this show that you do have mental toughness? And he was kind of like, "Yeah, but I talked to them. And we got to get better on defense because mm -hmm. they've, you know, again, uh, I think I think some of the issues. I don't know if some of the issues are communication, but or what it was. Obviously, Lydia Goad was on fire in the second half of that game, but he definitely wants better defensive play. Yeah. We need, need we need to give a shout out. I mean, not only to Redinger at twenty five against Logansport, but Olivia Lead with thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she play, she really played with confidence. There was one play where she went coast to coast, got a bucket, and got a foul for a three point play. That was like, wow. Yeah, really good game there yeah. in that uh, Logan Sport game for and Lydia. She's a really good defender. I mean, mm -hmm. in, in that one three one, she knows her role. Yeah, and uh, I I really like the way she's been playing. Yeah, well, that, that kind of you know when she went out foul trouble there in that uh, Northwestern game, it kind of uh, made a big difference. Yeah. So. And I know one girl left the team, so that puts a lot more pre one one of their bigs inside left the team, so that is not or is not on the team anymore. So that means Ellie Bolenbacher is I think a little more, um, even more on her shoulders to to uh, really clean the glass. So yeah. that's going to be something to watch moving forward. So they have LCA coming to uh, Phil Waybright tomorrow. The uh, Cougars are nine and eight, and then they have uh, OD coming in on Thursday, and they are five and eleven. So. Yeah, that's, couple of that's games. weird because LCA is nine and eight and OD is five and eleven. But mm. if you gave OD LCA schedule and you gave LCA OD schedule, the records would probably be reversed. Right, right. Uh, and uh, I, I, I tr you know, again, Argus. I mean, this is a must-win for the conference, but it's probably going to be hard to win the conference right. after that loss to Bethany. But right. uh, they've still got a shot again. I'm just so amazed at. And then you know, uh, OD. I mean, again. I'll be curious to see. I know OD's pretty young. Uh, they they they're playing fast again for that's for sure. But again, our Argus has really uh, controlled that rivalry with OD the last two two three years. Or really, ever since Coach Jennings has taken over. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a be an interesting week there. Obviously, the uh, the conference game yeah. on Saturday is going to be big. Yeah, but it, you know, we we, we were both kind of watching that tournament at floor level at Logansport on Saturday, and watching Sam Redinger play it up close, it just. Her quick, she's got such a quick release on her shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it, it you know, because her her height is unassuming. She's at five six, mm -hmm. but she gets she has such a quick release on her shot, and she's so accurate with it. Mm -hmm. She's hard to stop, and all of that. But she understands that when she hears a whistle, throw the ball up at the rim. Yeah, yeah, and you're going to get free throws. And she is hard to keep off the line as well. That's it's kind of a lost art. I mean, you know, that was always the thing mm -hmm. that we were always taught. You know, if you hear a whistle make it look like you're shooting no matter where you're at just yeah. make it look like you're shooting mm -hmm. and uh, maybe you can get some free throws out of it right for for a player to average 30 points a game and not be a not be ball dominant mm -hmm. that's 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 hard that's, mm -hmm. that's very impressive yep let's move down the road here a little bit the cast and comets the uh the boys team sitting at three and five zero oh and one in hoosier north play split uh two games at the miami county tournament lost the opener to McConaughey, 56-78. Lane Hook led the way with 13 in that one. 
And uh, they came back and got the win uh, against North Miami in the Constellation, 47-26. Big one coming up for them tonight as they host the Culver Cavaliers. Culver 5-3, and 1-1 one and one in the conference. So both teams with one conference loss. You don't want to get that second conference loss. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I saw both games for the Miami County Tournament, at the, and I'm talking about two games that were just totally opposite. I mean, they, they played on uh, Wednesday night against McConaughey, and the first quarter you're like, they can't play this fast because mm-hmm. McConaughey will eat, eat this up. Mm-hmm. I thought they played a lot better the last three quarters of the game. Um, you can only do so much to slow down McConaughey. Yeah. <laughs> but... And Josiah Ball, who had 34 in that game, is one of the leading scorers in the state. I, I thought, but I thought Casson was better in well, the last. Well, they held him to 34. Right. They yeah. <laughs> what right. What did he have in the championship? 45. He had 45 <laughs> in the championship game against Peru. Yeah. I thought Casson did better, and I talked with John Burris, McConaughey's coach, after the game. He, he said Casson slowed us down. He he he. I didn't I didn't prompt him to say that. He said that. Mm-hmm. And I thought Casson played pretty well. I mean, I just uh, again the. I thought McConaughey just shot the ball really well, and some of their other guys shot the ball really well. I mean, uh, if they, you know, um, Fuddy Kyle, and it was in the Carl Davis, Fuddy Kyle was the one who impressed him because he had 12, but he's just all over the place in terms mm-hmm. of his rebounding and his and his defense. Uh, but, you know, I thought Lane Hook was really impressive in that game. Um, I thought, you know, again, that Caleb Stinson just keeps getting better and better. Uh, and Talon Zider, he's just basically automatic if you give him an open three-point look. Uh, but then the North Miami game was the next day. It was like 16 hours later, and it was to the totally the opposite game. They just shut down North Miami. I mean, they 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 were tremendous defensively. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, Coach Davis said he played more zone against McConaughey than he had in the seven years as coach. But against and against North Miami, I I was kind of curious to see well, what are they going to do in this game? If go back to the man, I would assume. Well, they played more man, but they didn't play all, they didn't play all man. Uh, they, they 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 continue to play more zone and they they're looking pretty comfortable in it. Yeah, which is I can't believe we're saying that about a Carl Davis coach team. He is a man coach, usually thirty two minutes a game, but they they're getting the hang of it. They held Jake Riley to ten points, and we yeah. we just talked about Jake. He can score twenty against just about anybody. Yeah, and they held North Miami to twenty six points. I think North Miami averages in the forty in the mid forties. Mm-hmm. So they did a really nice job, and you know. Uh, Caleb Stinson, he's a point guard, but he's so much more than that. He can handle it. He can shoot it. He can drive to the basket and score. Mm-hmm. He's a good defender. He's a he's a really good rebounder for a guard as well. Mm-hmm. So they go from Jake Riley to Jack Rogers tonight. I mean, how do you sh- how do you slow down Jack Rogers? Uh, teams are still asking that question <laughs> themselves. So that's going to be a really interesting thing. Obviously, there's a little side issue with Josh Evans playing for Caston and Kyle Evans, his brother, coaching Culver mm-hmm. uh, with. Dad on the casted bench. Yeah, uh, there's a. I mean, these two coaching staffs know each other pretty the, well. I the would Evans Bowl. Yeah, the Evans Bowl. I think it's fair <laughs> to say these two coaching staffs know each other pretty well and know. Uh, I'll be curious to see what Culver does defensively. How, can they? Can they with their zone trap? Can they bother uh, Stinson and Zider and Caston's ball handlers? And also, uh, what will they do with Hook, who I think is going to be a real matchup problem, mm-hmm. and he. Because he's six two, six three, and he can shoot from the outside, but he's also got that little hook shot, <laughs> literally in the yeah, lane. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. I'm going to definitely be there for that one tonight. Uh, should be a good one there from the crater. Yeah, seven o'clock, varsity mm, only. No JV. Yeah. Um, prayers out to Culver. We heard the JV game was canceled because a Culver JV player suffered a seizure in practice. Oh, no. We don't know who that was, and obviously they're keeping the identity from us, but whoever that was, thoughts and prayers, be well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't didn't hear that. I was yeah. kind of curious, thought maybe somebody was sick, so that's, yeah. Um, yeah, and again, Culver's it's basically like a five-man JB team, so yeah, once one yeah. player can't go, they've got to cancel. So hopefully yeah. everybody's okay over there and it's going to be better. So then Caston goes to Delphi tomorrow night, taking on the uh, two and eight Oracles. Uh, what do we know about that? Uh, well, again, um, it's a, it's a Delphi team with Austin Collie. He likes to play a lot of kids. I don't know if he's got quite the numbers there. Caston's had good success against Delphi in previous years. They've they've actually played really well in Oracle Arena over the years. So again, Caston should have the depth advantage in that game. Yeah. 
Uh, on to the girls, 16 and 0, number one, cast in Lady Comets. Congratulations to Lady Comets moving up to the number one spot this week. Number one well in deserved. the number one in the rankings and still number one in the stated defensive scoring average, 27.6 per game. Yeah. Um, and, and, but, the, and the big number for them, they are 6 and 0 in the conference now with a big win at Culver last night, 69-29. Right. Uh, so they have. Right, so they've clinched a share of the Hoosier North title. Mm-hmm. Knox, Winnemac, and North Judson all have one loss each, all to Caston. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Knox plays Winnemac tonight, so the loser is out. Right. But, of course, if Caston beats LaVille on Saturday afternoon, everybody else is right, out. Right, right. Uh, so, um, and, it, and don't forget to mention that they uh, they won the Miami County invite as well. Oh, yeah, they won the Miami County invite. Yeah. Against the, against McConaughey, who was really they were ready to go for that game, mm-hmm. and they played really hard. Um, but Cast and shut out, you know, again 48, 48, 40. And we're like, and I, it's funny if you're a Cast fan, geez, somebody scored forty points against us. Well, it should be noted that Miranda Stoll was on fire in that game until the fourth quarter when Cast and shut her down. Mm-hmm. I think Cast and kind of wore her down a little bit, and uh, I think Cast does that to a lot of people. Yeah, and they're. I can explain the other difference in that game in two words, and those two words would be Isabel Scales. Mm-hmm. I mean, she – and, you know, Coach uh, Coach Douglas talked about this. You know, when everybody else is struggling, Isabel's there to pick everybody else up. Mm-hmm. And she's so tough to stop because she can score – first of all, she gets, what, one or two putbacks a game. Mm-hmm. She can score in that mid-range jump shot, which not a lot of girls have. Then she can shoot the three. Then she can post up. I right. mean, it's just it's it was just too much for McConaughey to handle. In the right. End. Well, she had a what she have a double double in the McConaughey game, and she had a, a triple double last night against Culver. Yeah. Almost had a quadruple double. She had, was three steals away from a yeah. quadruple double. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when's the last time you heard of somebody in high school having a quadruple double? Yeah. yeah. And then the North Miami game was the following night, and again, so that they went forty eight forty. That was the first time they'd won by single digits all year. Mm-hmm. The North Miami game that was even closer. Mm-hmm. Uh, North Miami, you know, uh, Caden Hanley it's a three point in the fourth quarter, and North Miami led thirty five thirty four. First time since the Argus game that Caston had trailed in the second half. First time all season Caston had trailed in the fourth quarter. And what do they go to? Isabel Scales, who gets a bucket, puts them ahead. Um, hits a free throw. North Miami ties the game, but um, big free throw by Maddie Douglas. Would went t- she had gone two for nine the previous game against right, McConaughey from right. the line. Kudos to Maddie. For, McConaughey was yeah. following her on purpose late right. in the game. To, they they wanted her to shoot free throws, and Maddie hit the big free throw, and then she misses the second. But there's a jump ball fighting for the loose ball, arrow to cast, and, and then huge basket, scales to hinder lighter for a bucket that puts them up by three, and they were able to hang on. Uh, Laney Musall had kind of a look at a three at the buzzer, but it was really well guarded from the corner, and it was an air ball. Hanley was great for North Miami. Hanley and Musall were great, but... Um, Kasten had just enough to win that game. It was a defensive war mm-hmm. in that game. Well, we mentioned that big game coming up. They host LaVille on Saturday afternoon to uh, clinch the conference. But another big one coming up at the crater for Kasten is they host 14-2 and Bethany yeah. on Tuesday. Oh, first of all, we need to give a shout-out to Macy Hinderleiter. 18 points, a career high against Culver last mm-hmm. night. I think just like the second or third game in her career when she's been in double figures. Yeah. So, and 12 for Zimpleman. But, yeah, five in a row at home now for Cast. And obviously the LaVille game is the big game because they can wrap up the conference. Right. But then Bethany Christian, the state runner-up, on Friday night. Then back at it Saturday afternoon against Tri-County, the team that won their sectional last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and they're, they're having a really good year. And they're having a good yeah. year. Zarcy is a really good player. And Tri-County beat Mount Vernon at the Twin Lakes Tournament. I mean, they went one and two. But they beat a four a pretty decent 4A school yeah. at the tw- Twin Lakes Tournament. After Tri County, then home with then you get the rematch at home with North Miami, and then home with Carroll. Hmm. That's a that's a little bit of a rough schedule, right? Carroll handed Western their first loss. Yeah, wouldn't Carroll like to hand the Lady Comets their first loss? Yeah, Allie Harness coming into the crater. Yeah, yeah. She did not play there two years ago because of her wrist injury. So yes, that's she's, right. She, yeah. I don't believe she has ever played at the Comet Crater before. Yeah, yeah. So that. I mean, that's going to be fantastic. These next yeah, five Har- at home. Harness and Wagner, I mean, they are just tough as nails for the Carroll Cougars. Yeah, three, yeah. So we'll, we'll see if Caston can keep this up. You know, I talked with, jo- with Josh Douglas after the Miami County invite. He goes, the, 
he, he thought that they were tired and that they needed a week to recharge their batteries. Mm-hmm. They played seven, they went, basically had seven trips on a school bus in the month of December, mm-hmm. either road or neutral, and had another trip on the school bus last night to yeah. Culver. Now they got five in a row at home, so he thinks they're going to recharge their batteries. They're going to be curious to see what kind of energy they play with over these next five games. Well, you think they'd have some juice going into that Laville game. They'll wrap that up if they can do right. that. That'd be two years in a row with the undefeated conference. And I think Maddie Douglas is kind of getting through that wall a little bit, that yeah. freshman wall. Yeah. Because she's at, you know, she's. I mean, she's running all over the place, offensively and defensively. But boy, she shot the ball really well against North Miami. They don't win without her 14 points in that game, and I think really uh, maybe finding a kind of a second win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck to the Comets as they uh, try and wrap up the Hoosier North and then uh, take on some really tough non-conference opponents coming up as well. Mm-hmm. So let's take another quick break. One more shout-out, Livian Wilburn of Caston, competing in the semi-state at Rochester today, Rest- yes. World Wrestling. Yes. Let's take another quick break here. We'll come back. We'll talk uh, some Pioneer and some uh, Culver Cavaliers here in our next segment. We'll be right back. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit Kriskin'sPoolsAndSpas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, let's talk some Culver Cavaliers. Val, we talked about the the big game for the Cavs tonight as they head down to Fulton to take on the Cast and Comets. They haven't played since the twenty second of December, so yeah. the old question: Rust versus Rest. You know, how's that going to play out? First game in two weeks. I know they lost sixty six, sixty two in overtime to Washington Township. I'll be curious to see how they, you know, not only the Rust versus Rest. Again, scoring the ball doesn't seem to be a problem for this team. I mean, with Rodgers, Guasp, and Height, I mean, they, they know who their big three are. And, you know, a lot of teams are kind of searching. Culver knows who their big three are. I'm curious to see how they defend Caston. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we talked about that a little early because Caston, they've got a point guard who can penetrate in Stinson, and they've got some three-point shooters like Zyder and Evans. Right. So they've got, to be, they've got to be able to run guys off the line um, but they've, um, but can they force turnovers as well? But they've also got to defend the post because uh, Casting got a freshman in the post named Lane Hook. So again, and this is a Casting team that doesn't have a, kind of a traditional center. Uh, uh, would that be? I mean, would that be? You've, you've mm-hmm. seen Ka- Culver play. I, I think that's kind of fair to say. So, um, who has a traditional center yeah. anymore? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Logan Caudill is really more of a of a kind of a wing, but he can play the post a little bit. Yeah, they, more of a face facing the basket type of post player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm curious to see if Culver will try to push the pace in this game. I'm think I'm thinking they will just because that's how they play. I mean, yeah. I think that's that's how they play when they're at their best, and I think that's how Rogers plays when he's at his best. 
But that Rodgers versus Stinson point guard matchup, I'd almost pay to see them play one-on-one. I mean, that's going to be fun <laughs> yeah. just to watch those two guys yeah. get after it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, again, this is still, you know, obviously the Washington Township game is frustrating, you know, to lose an overtime on the road. From what we heard, there was there wasn't the greatest officiated game ever. From if, I guess if you're a Culver fan, but again, five and three is a nice place to be, yeah. knowing that you didn't have Rodgers for the Rochester game. Um, but I think they've been and they've done well against you know I mean you know losing at Knox. I don't think you have to apologize for that one either. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good Knox team. So again, but now you got to you know again your, you know your next three games at Cast and home with Community Baptist and then home with Triton. Yeah. Before you go to Laville for by county, curious to see if they can pick up momentum now that they have those two weeks a break. Obviously, the Triton game is really big next Friday because I think Triton's ranked number seven in the state. The other nine teams in the top ten are all in the south. Hmm. And you know, one A North again. I know we've beaten this like a drum, but South nobody saw Southwood getting to the state finals mm-hmm. one year ago at this time. Right. So. Who knows? Somebody's got to make it out of the 1A North again. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It could be a team from sectional 50. Yeah. Again, I there's kind of this feeling that Marquette Catholic's the favorite to get out of sectional 50 until otherwise until somebody beats them. Mm-hmm. You know. But I, I think Culver they're heading they're training in the right direction. Boy, Rogers gives them a chance. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like we said, it's a huge conference game as well because both teams coming in with one conference loss and, and you know. Not a real good chance that you're going to get into that conference mix with two losses. So yeah. you want to keep that one loss, right? Yeah, right. And this conference race, I think Judson, I think Judson and Knox are the favorites. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, and, and Triton will have something to say about that too. But again, mm-hmm. Culver's got the again Culver gets Triton at home this year, mm-hmm. and uh, so I mean, I think that that one almost seems like a must win kind of. Yeah. Yeah. But first, they got to be cat. I mean, they got to be cast. Right. On the girls' side, uh, the Lady Cavs four and eleven. We talked about the uh, loss last night to the uh, number one Cast and Comets. They got a game coming up on Wednesday. They host Frontier one and thirteen. So an opportunity for the Cavs to pick up a win against the Falcons, and then uh, another one next Friday. We'll talk more about that. But they uh, they have the Triton Trojans uh, on the back to back double header there coming in. Triton only six and eleven on the girls' side, so you know maybe an opportunity there for the Cavs as well. Alexa O'Brien had a nice game against Caston last night with twelve, but again, when you get, when you're a young team and you're trying to find some cohesiveness, the last team you really want to play is Caston, right? Who is just loaded with cohesiveness. I mean, they're yeah. with a bunch of bunch of seniors who played together for mm-hmm. a long time, yeah. and you're trying to develop that, and, and you've got a new coach, coaches. So yeah, it just it's even better when you get to play them twice in ten days, <laughs> right? So uh, that stuff. But I mean, uh, Frontier. I think I think Culver should be favored to win that game against Frontier. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, Haley J will be a tough player to stop. But I mean, I think um, you know I'll be curious to see how Culver tries to defend uh, Frontier. Culver's you know uh, the nieces are our zone coaches, and that's kind of something they've added. You know, I, I think uh, Coach Lo- and that's something they've kind of added to. Um, Culver girls basketball is, um, and again that's a frontier team that struggled to shoot the ball at times mm-hmm. so we'll see how they do and then you know Triton it's all about Addison Beers and everything kind of starts with her because she's a big who can score just basically at anywhere on the court I mean she she can not only score in the post but she can shoot the three yeah yeah and if they need her to she can handle the ball a little bit yeah I yeah. mean, she's she does a little bit of everything for that Triton team, right? So. But that first game of by County is Appleville. I mean, that's that's gonna be a winnable game. But I yeah. mean, it's now about getting that confidence and getting that cohesiveness. Uh, going obviously Sieber with Sieber Williams and O'Brien, and I think you know they they've got kind of three three girls who can sort of score, and then Brooke Davis is coming on as well. Yeah. Uh, anything on the wrestling and swimming front for the Cavs? Ariana Vela of Culver is participating in the Penn. Girls Wrestling Semi State today. Okay. Not the Rochester Semi State, the Penn Semi State. Yeah. So, congratulations to Ariana, who is a senior who finished second in her weight class at the Mishawaka Regional last week. Yeah. I saw that Logan Sport had some wrestlers that were going to Penn as well, which is irrelevant besides the fact that they're driving right through Rochester to get to Penn. That's kind of weird, but yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, good luck there. So um, let's move on to Pioneer. The boys' basketball team is 2-7. and seven. They had a rough go of it at the uh, uh, Kitchen Classic over uh, break right before Christmas, uh, losing all three games there. <coughs> Tonight they have Frontier coming in to, uh, to Pioneer, Frontier 3-7, and seven, and then they head to Faith Christian, who is 2-6 and six tomorrow. Yeah, I was at the Pioneer game at the Kitchen Classic against um, Rossville <coughs> against Rossville in the seventh place game at the Delphi Elementary Gym. Mm -hmm. That was an interesting experience because that was—I'm pretty sure that was not a regulation sized court. <laughs> that was an elementary sized court. <laughs> yeah, and it was—it was like watching ping pong. It was, you know, it was back and forth. And the thing about Rossville is they go—they go ten deep. I mean, he starts five, and then about. Four minute, every four minutes, he, he subs in a new five, and so and not only that, but they had like Rossville had like seven different guys hit a three pointer. I mean, so they spread you out. They've got, I mean, it it, it was just kind of a dizzying game. Um, Pioneer was kind of they were behind most of that game. They kept making a little rally to keep it close. Drew McKegg caught fire and the scored fourteen points in the fourth quarter. Finished with twenty six for the game, and then combined with Noah Miller who had twelve, he had four threes. Noah was just a dead eye three point shooter. Um, they kept it close, but Rossville was able to hang on and win 56-52. That was in the um, seventh place game, and that was after uh, Pioneer had lost 56-45 <coughs> to Delphi and then lost to Frankfurt 72-39. Um, Frankfurt wound up winning the tournament for the second straight year. Yeah. So. But uh, the Frontier game, uh, again, it's a Frontier team that I don't think has a ton of size. Uh, this is a team that... Which is good because, of course, Pioneer doesn't have a ton of size. I mean, Lucas Perry is basically playing center. He's six feet, mm -hmm. maybe six one. Um, again, it's a Pioneer team. They, they they play smart. I mean, I uh, again, and and I think they're they're um, you know, Rylan Toloza is a guy who's really starting to feel his oats a little bit on the basketball court. I think part of it is he's he was injured a little bit in the past, but I mean, he when he gets the ball in his hands, I mean, he is so fast. Yeah, that if he can, and and he's working. I think he's worked on his ball handling a little bit, and if he can get to the hoop, he's hard to stop because he's he's so fast and strong. Yeah, and then you know, Mike Aranz has made a big difference. You know, we know we know about Drew McKay, we know about Miller, and even even kids like Lucas Perry and Luke, Luke Blackman are are contributing more and more. Yeah, uh, free throw shooting is a big concern for this Pioneer boys team. They they have not shot the ball well from the line. They've got to get it going from there. Yeah, big one. So we'll see uh, what they can do here. You know, Frontier got that win against Caston, so I'm still <clears> shaking <throat> my head about that one. Yeah. Uh, but again, it's a new coach at Frontier, so a little more. I, I'll be curious uh, again. Pioneer gets this one at home. I, 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 they, they really need to win the Frontier game to get some momentum going into Faith Christian because you know Faith Christian will be pretty athletic. I think on Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah. On the uh, girls' side for the Panthers, yeah. uh, they moved to 5-10 and 10 with the win last night at Frontier, 52-37. Kind of a rough start last night. They trailed 25-14 uh, at the half. Uh, I think the uh, the bus driver took the back roads from uh, Royal Center to uh, Chalmers, mm -hmm. and uh, several of the girls weren't feeling real good by the time they got there. And uh, So a little bit of a slow start for the uh, for the Panthers, but well, thirty-eight to twelve in the second half. It sounds like they whatever whatever they took at <laughs> halftime, it settled their stomachs. Yeah, especially Mc, uh, McKenna Stricker with twenty-two points all in the second half. Yeah, and that's a career high for McKenna, I believe. No, she had twenty-six, she had 26, against, 26 Logan. against Logansport. So yeah, the second career high for a half. Yeah, career high for <laughs> a half, and then nine for Casey Webb. Yeah, yeah, good good effort there from Webb. And I think Lois Slayer had eight. And eight, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, 52 points. I think Pioneer will take that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we were at the Kitchen Classic. At, uh, you know, those last two games were kind of frustrating because they had their moments in that game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're getting healthier. And I think with Layer and Jocelyn Kane, jo you know, Jocelyn was out for a while. I think it was, mm -hmm. was it more of an illness than, a, than, a, than an injury. Yeah, she was sick for a while. Yeah, a good week and a half. But with Layer and Kane, those are two just gnats defensively. Mm -hmm. And then to go with. Stricker and McKeg, it's kind of like a four guard lineup almost when they're when they're playing well. So they, they, there's a little bit of everything there. They can shoot it a little bit, they can handle it a little, a little bit, and they can be bothersome on defense. Mm -hmm. um, North Montgomery loss was a tough one. I, I think that that was one of them that uh, right. North you Montgomery know, had 28 turnovers and they still won. That yeah, was, and, and only 10 for the Panthers. That's yeah. got to be the season low for them. Yeah, 
So that that was a tough one to take there at the uh, in the third place game, but uh, you know I think there's there's some possibility for some momentum, but then they've got a couple tough ones coming up at home. They got Tri County and Maconaqua. Mm -hmm. Tri County uh, tomorrow, and then Maconaqua comes in on Tuesday, and yeah, both those teams having really good years. Right, and one thing about McKenna Stricker is she combines strength <laughs> with. Um, kind of an ability to get off. I mean, she's a much improved shooter as well. So she, because of her strength, she can get off her shot. Um, you, you know, you really have to be a good defender to keep her from getting a good look. And she's got a quick first step. Um, so she can. Re I would really like what I really like about McKenna for a lot of for a lot of point guards. They don't know how to drive the baseline, and she's very good at that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's helped out a lot. So. Uh, yeah, I mean now you've got. Uh, <coughs> uh, hold on here. They've got like you mentioned, you know, Tri County. That'll be a really tough opponent. I mean, yeah. that's a because yeah. that's a pretty deep Tri County team, mm -hmm. and a team that can uh, that's seen different styles of play, and that's tomorrow afternoon, and then McConaughey on Tuesday, and of course with McConaughey, it's all about Miranda Stoll and Bailey Carson. I mean, yeah. those are their two kind of epicenters of their team. They both can shoot the three. So they're going to have to guard the three-point line in that game. And then uh, Coach Davis is bringing along his freshman group slowly but surely, and they're really catching on as well when you talk about uh, Kyle and Kaiser and the next Mabin. And, uh, yeah. So uh, he, he goes about eight or nine deep. Mm -hmm. So and, and But they're pretty – that athletic – that freshman group is pretty athletic for McConaughey. So that will be an interesting matchup as well. And of course, they've got they travel to Argus next Saturday, and that's an Argus team that will be hungry uh, to beat them. Yeah, uh, after winning a couple of close games in the previous couple of years. <clears throat> yeah, Argus. Um, you know, last well, I think um, what was it three years ago at Pioneer Sam's freshman year. I mean, that was kind of her coming out year. I mean, she she really uh, yeah. you know you're like oh she can do it with against the best of them and. So, yeah. you know, obviously there's a lot of ties back with McKenna going back to Argus. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's kind of the, you know, the leader of this Pioneer team this year. So that's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. So basically the bottom line is Pioneer gets a bunch of really good players coming up on their schedule. Zarcy from Tri-County tonight, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Stolen Carson from McConaqua, And then Samantha Redinger from Argus next Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Well, and they have a game Friday too, I think, don't they? Do they? Is that next week or? That's what I have. Okay, I know the one week they have three games. Maybe that's not next week, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, and you know the the January schedule for the Panthers is pretty packed too. Obviously, yeah. Tri County was supposed to be their first game of the year. That got moved back due to the volleyball team, mm -hmm. and then they got Southwood at the end of the year, which got moved back due to yeah. the volleyball team. So nine or ten games this month, yeah. Yeah, so they still got a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of games to play and. Uh, you know, when we get into it, to start talking sectionals, I mean, that sectional's looking kind of tough again. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting as well for them. So anything else you want to talk about, Pioneer or Culver, here before we move on? Uh, nope, just uh, hoping any, uh, any, any wrestling and swimming results, please send them to me. We'll be happy to talk about them on the show. Yep. All right, we'll take another break, and when we come back in our last segment, we'll finish up with Tippecanoe Valley and the Winnemac Warriors. We'll be right back. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. 
We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to healthcare needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible, it should be customized to patient needs, it should strive for better health outcomes, it should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Hi, welcome back here Talking Sports with Val on a Friday afternoon. We're going to wrap things up here, talk some Valley and Winnemac. For the boys setting at 6-5, and five, they went down to Delta and went 1-2 and two in a very, very loaded tournament down there over break. Right, lost to Muncie Central 55-53 in the first round, came back in the consolation round, and beat Fort Wayne Southside 67-52. That's the same Fort Wayne Southside team that beat Valley by nine right. earlier in the year at Valley. Hey, does Raleigh Shepard make a difference? Yeah, yeah, he makes a big difference. Right. And then a 49-35 loss to Columbia City, which, again, Columbia City is a very good team, no doubt. But that's also a Columbia I mean, again, that's a Columbia City team that lost to Whitco. Right. So, But, again, I mean, no doubt about it, Columbia City is very good. Riley Shepard, he even had 16, I think he had 16 of Valley's 35 in that game. This has kind of been an inconsistent Valley team. I mean, you look at them 6-5, and five, but against the schedule they played, I mean, it's, they don't really have to apologize for anything, but again, they've just been inconsistent, I guess. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to explain. Stephen Acasi was held to four points against Columbia City. And, you know, Stephen's got to come, you know, he's got to be more productive than that, but Again, Stevens made such strides in his game that it's uh, you don't want to be too hard on the kid. But, I mean, they need more. Again, it's that sophomore class with Cowan and Nikasi who they, I mean, they really need points from that because, again, Kyler Johnson is, when, when Akasi and Shepard and Ian Cooks here on their game, that leads to more opportunities for um, Kyler Johnson. Mm -hmm. And that'll make things easier on him. Um, again, this Valley team is loaded with height. Yeah, and they go six five six 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 up front. Um, again, the, the Muncie Central game I think was maybe probably the one that got away. I mean, it's a good Muncie Central team that you know beat Logansport and plays really good defense. But I, I think they would want that game over again. You know, Delta wound up winning that tournament on their home court. Delta's ranked number two in three A. That's a Delta team that could make be down in Gamebridge at the end of the year. I, I was hoping Valley would get a chance to play them. Uh, it didn't happen, but uh, you know, six and five, and now you know Plymouth coming up on Saturday. Obviously, people. Joel Grindle was very popular at Valley. He was the right. assistant principal there for a while. Um, I think people knew he would. People knew he would get back into coaching somehow, some way. He just loves it too much, and uh, he's done a great job. But he's he's very well liked. Uh, Riley Shepard hit was seven threes against them two years ago when he was a sophomore. Um, he, <laughs> Coach Grindle knows who Riley is, and we'll, we'll see what kind of defensive plan they have because Valley will clearly have the height advantage in this game. Yeah, he's kind of got the Plymouth Pilgrims playing, uh, you know, old style basketball, and they're coming in at five and four. So, mm -hmm. you know that uh, that should be a good one. And then they host Laville coming up on Tuesday. The Lancers setting at three and three. So, you know, their home heavy schedule, you know, back in effect, continuing. Five of the next six are at home. The one game that's on the road at Maconaqua next Saturday night. Whew. What will Josiah Ball against Valley's size? Yeah. That will be very interesting. And <clears throat> Coach Burris has had many battles with Valley over the years. I'll be curious to see how that one turns out. Yeah. McConaughey's Valley won at home over McConaughey last year, but McConaughey's had Valley's number over the years. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be interesting. Should be, uh, yeah, should be a good one. So uh, on the girls' side of things, uh, they just keep rolling 14 and 3. They did go. Two and one in the Carroll tournament, but uh, you know another loss yeah. to Western. I don't think you're gonna, you know, get too upset over that. Right. Western is really good. Western's really really good. I think losing by twenty, the margin of defeat they lost by twenty eight. Yeah, was a surprise. That was sixty three thirty five, and that was with a full week to prepare. 
that was kind of, it was actually eight days to prepare. That was kind of the disappointing part because you thought they, but again, Western's a team that can just physically overwhelm you. And then what, what, what stinks is that, you know, the next two games were against what Riverton Park and University, which was, uh, you wanted to, I was hoping for a matchup with Carroll. Right. Or even Lewis Cass. Yeah. Again, they, they didn't, I don't think they got much, they, they won those last two games. I don't think they got much out of finishing in fifth place in that tournament. Right. Because then they go to Northridge, they, they went to Northridge on uh, Wednesday night and lost 67 42. Yeah. Northridge is a great team. They're 18 and 1. They're, mm-hmm. undefe- they're undefeated in the NLC. They're ranked number 11 on 4A. I can't believe there are 10 better 4A teams than right. Northridge. Right. Northridge has a girl named Ella Mohammed who had five threes and scored 25 points. Mm. I mean, there are teams that have struggled to score 25 against Valley this year. Yeah. Um, Amy Egolf had 17 in that Steph's game. That's Knox. Yeah. <laughs> and then Valley just took it out on Knox on Thursday. <laughs> I think, you know, I was talking with Coach Kinding before the season. He talked about these two games playing Northridge and Knox on back to back nights and. He knew he knew he thought he knew they'd get back around midnight on Wednesday from the Northridge game. Well, what energy would they have against Knox? Well, they were up like twenty-seven to four after for the first quarter. Wound up winning sixty-one to fifteen. Held Knox to two field goals the entire game. Hmm. So it's I, not bad defense. Not bad defense. Hmm. And Ava Egolf had twenty. Only one Valley scored sixty-one points. Only one player in double figures. That was Ava Egolf. She had twenty-one. Mm-hmm. But Gabby Gonzalez is back. She had nine. And again, um, the girl who's been coming on of late is Lucy Hayden. And we talked about when um, when uh, Peterson went down with her knee injury that mm-hmm. somebody was going to have to step up. And Lucy Hayden has really done that. Has I she? mean, and I think she's she, I think she had eight against Northridge. Mm-hmm. I mean, so she's not only scoring, but she's doing it. We, we saw Lucy play last year. I think it, it was kind of just slow coming along for her. And I think part of it too was that Carly Snyder was playing so well that she, she deserves some minutes in the post as well. So, mm-hmm. but Lucy coming on here. Um, that's been that's been big, and you know now that Macy Peterson's out, um, again I don't think you have to worry about front court depth for Valley. Yeah, they got a little time as they don't play again until next Saturday with Northrop. And Northrop beat Valley bad at last year's holiday tournament. I mean, this is a Northrop team that if they're not the best team in Fort Wayne, probably Homestead is, but Northrop's right on their heels. Hmm. This is a very good Northrop team, and. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how they did. But that game was on a neutral court. I think it was over in, at Trine. This game will be home at Valley. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how they do. We should mention they have a game on January nineteenth, which is two weeks from today. It's it's the Hoosier Conference crossover, which is a game they basically picked up from Lewis Cass's schedule to fill out their schedule. So yes, Valley will be playing a Hoosier Conference opponent on January 19th. I know that sounds weird, but... It sounded really weird. I thought that was a typo when I saw yeah. that myself. Yeah, they will. Yeah, just to fill out their... Because they needed a 20-second game, so there it is. It'll be a home. And then the next day, on January 20th, they travel to Kokomo. So what uh, what place crossover team will they be playing? I think it's like the fifth place team. Okay. So out of the what, West Division, is that how they did it? I East think, and West? Yeah, is that how the Hoosier... I think so, yeah. Huh. I don't think they'll be. Yeah, I don't think they'll be playing Rensselaer, which is kind of who I was hoping they'd play. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Three undefeated teams left in the state, by the way: Caston, Tri Township, and Rensselaer. Yeah. North White has played all three of them. Yeah. They haven't won any of them, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think North White's the one team in the state that's played all three of them. Yeah. All three of them. That's... There's your There's your trivia question for the day. Right. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, this is a Valley team. I still think they're going to be the favorite when it comes to the Rochester sectional. Yeah. That's kind of neat too. All three of those teams. I mean, they're you know, if you do a triangle between them, I mean, northern part of the state, not too far away from each other. Yeah, yeah. So some good, uh, good basketball here. All right, um, we already talked about the swimmers. We'll have uh, them at Rochester on uh, on Monday. Anything else wrestling, swimming wise from Valley that you know? Uh, no, I know they did pretty well at the um, the Matt Coons tournament, which was at Laville last Saturday. The boys. Um, they didn't have any girls wrestlers advance, uh, but I know the, the wrestling team's doing having a fine year. I mean, they've got some veteran kids. Uh, obviously, Dalton Alper is the kid, kind of the the headliner. Mm-hmm. Dalton's you know a four year wrestler. He's going to be real solid at two fifteen. I know. Um, uh, and they're I, they're going to be taking a different route. We talked about Rochester's route to the state. Right. They're actually kind of following Rochester's old route. Right. He'll do, he'll do well at the Peru yeah sectional. And he and he I. I uh, now, now that Dalton's going through the Fort Wayne semi-state, this is his big opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And again, I, I like the the Sisk kid, Colton Sisk at heavyweight. I like him too. Uh, Thad Shamba is another good kid. Yeah. 
All right, uh, let's move over to Winnemac. The boys setting at four and six, but they are zero and three in the conference. They did go two and one in the Kitchen Classic at Delphi, and uh, have a big one coming up tonight with the two and four Knox Redskins. But uh, Knox, you know, t both of those wins were conference wins, so they're two and one in the conference. And then uh, Tuesday, Northfield comes to town. Uh, Northfield setting at three and seven. Right. Well, um, yeah. Um, the Winnipeg boys spent much of December on a bus. They're going to be spending much of January at home. Um, I really liked how they bounced back. That was a brutal loss against North Newton in the first round of the Kitchen Classic. But they came back and won two games. I think they're they're getting a better handle on things defensively. And John Malco continues to score at a, at a high clip. I, you know, we unfortunately we read that Rochester game where he really struggled to score. But I think that was more about Rochester's defense in that game. Mm -hmm. um, well, they proved that last night. Yeah, Rochester did. Right, Rochester showed how good they can be defensively. Right. Uh, this is a not uh, so again to come back and and beat you know, they beat Rossville by twelve, and that's not a bad Rossville team. I mm -hmm. that was a, that was a very good win on Friday, and then they get to come back on Saturday afternoon and they beat Delphi on Delphi's home, well, Del Delphi's elementary court. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so they were able to pull that one out. So again, with both Malco uh, brothers and then Jace Bentel. And Brendan Hines, um, I, I think you know again they can score from the perimeter. Again, they, they don't get a lot of paint points. Now the paint points they get is off dribble penetration, um, so that's going to be key. They're going to be at a pretty big size disadvantage against Knox tonight. Uh, that's a, again I I have a lot of respect for, the, for Coach Eskridge at Knox. He does a really good job. So. Uh, can Winnemag defend the post and not get in foul trouble tonight? That will be key. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, you know, Northfield, they'll be favored in that game, and then, you know, they get Judson at home, and that's always a big rivalry mm -hmm. game. Uh, that is a good Judson ball club. I, mm -hmm. Coach Cheesham is doing a great job with that team. They lost a lot from last year, they but did. He's, he's doing a great job. I, I'm very impressed with how, how well they are. They are very well schooled fundamentally. They do not beat themselves. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, on the girls' side, boy, I tell you what, this season Coach Stasiak uh, and those girls have put together just continues on 11-5 and five and uh, champions of the Delphi Kitchen Classic. So impressed. You know, I, I was at the Kitchen Classic championship game. I was so impressed with what I saw. That Delphi crowd was into it on their home floor. They come back from 12 down to tight in the fourth quarter, and Winnemag just, they were tough. And they get a big put-back bucket by Piper Link and a big put-back bucket by... Uh, Marissa Iverson, they, they, they just, you know, I, th I think I quoted Marissa Iverson was just saying, we, you know, we just wanted it more, and that was, mm -hmm. that was what happened. They just wanted it more. And how many clutch threes has Sadie Popejoy hit already this year, halfway through her freshman year? Yeah, she's hit more threes than clutch threes than most girls hit in a career. Mm -hmm. And she had a huge three. It was a great pass by Piper Link to set her up. That put him up by six. Yeah. And the the thing that impresses me with with Winnemac is it seems like they have the option of you know one night it might be link going crazy one night it might be croft going crazy one night it might be pope joy iverson smith. i mean yeah smith i mean they just have so many girls right now that are capable of carrying this team you know on a night-to-night -night basis yeah um, i'm so impressed with marissa iverson i mean she comes off the bench for this team but yet she's i mean she goes i had to work on she you know she talked about she had to get stronger I mean, she had to get in the weight room and get stronger. And now she's being, she able to finish at the rim. Mm -hmm. And same thing with Link. And then we haven't even talked about Candace Croft, who had, or, you know, she had 14, including those two huge free throws late. And you know, when I saw when we saw Candace against Cast earlier in the year, she got hurt early in the game. And I think she, so it has, she hasn't it hasn't been smooth sailing for her this year. She's had to deal with some injuries and some health issues. But boy, she played really well, and um, she can create her own shot. And she's a she's got that pull up jump shot, which is really effective, and she can drive the ball to the basket. Uh, I'm I'm yeah, just have, I would just have a lot of good things to say about this team. And defensively, they are so much improved uh, from last year. They can play whatever they can play a one three one or a two three. They've got basically every kind of zone in their bag. Um, it's really just a very impressive team. They they won four games last year. They won eleven this year, and they're not they're not done winning. Yeah, and they got two big ones coming up conference wise as the. Uh, Three and one in conference uh, wise, Knox Redskins tonight, and then they go to Triton on Tuesday. Uh, Triton probably out of the, I mean, 
everybody's out of the conference pretty much yeah. besides Caston, mm-hmm. but who's going to get that second place spot? And you know that right. Knox Knox Winnemac game is going to be huge. Right now we know somebody's the Downs girl is didn't play against Valley last night. Right now Knox has to hop on a bus and head back to Winnemac tonight. So we we don't know. I mean they've got. Um, this is apparently maybe a shorthanded Knox team. That's because I think that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, they might be yeah. shorthanded. If they're without Morgan Downs, that's big because she's yeah. one of the best scorers on the team. Right. Uh, Coach Adcock's been playing a lot of players, but uh, they don't have a lot of scoring firepower. Yeah. So you certainly like Winamax's chances at home in that game, and then at Triton on Tuesday, um, it'll be curious to see how they match up against uh, Veers. Uh, and Triton, but again, you'd have to like Winamax chances in that game as well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Faulkner is a tough guard, and it'll be interesting to see Faulkner and Smith match up because they're very familiar with each other from cross Running, country and track, right. and then both of them could just run all day. Right. Uh, so, and then, uh, uh, and then Winamax got John Glenn next Saturday. And Winamax big. They only won four games last year, but one of them was against John Glenn at home, and that was maybe their most impressive win last year. Mm-hmm. So, John Glenn will be looking to get back at him this year. Yeah. And, you know, Winnemac, we were talking about with Pioneer, you know, talking about sectional 36. Winnemac is looking really good for Boy, that sectional. I mean, that, you got Lewis yeah. Cass, who's just having a really good year as well. But and, uh, and North Miami on their home floor. Right, right. And with then, Hanley. Yeah, and Wabash, I mean, they can get hot any night. Right. Wabash just won the Wabash County Tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and... Pioneers coming along, so yeah, that, uh, that north that section of North Miami is going to be crazy. I think that, that draw is going to be huge, and mm-hmm. you know, there's going to be two teams that have to play a quarterfinal game, and who that is is going to be big as well. Yeah, but so. uh, yeah, again, uh, just I I like a lot of what again. I was just so impressed with what I saw from Winnemac. They were again, they, they just play with a lot of enthusiasm. They they understand what work they put in to get to this point, and yeah. they deserve it. Yeah. Very well coached team as well. Yeah, <laughs> they got a they got a good one there in Coach Stasiak for sure. So, uh, yeah, good luck to them. Uh, you know, Knox only six and fourteen, but they are three and one in the conference. So, mm-hmm. you know, this is a big one for them tonight. So, uh, what else? Any wrestling from Winnemac? Uh, no, we're still looking for some. Again, I'd say the same thing about Winnemac. If you're a re- Winnemac wrestling coach or Winnemac. Uh, yeah, please send us your results. We we no love swimmers. To, yeah, I know you no swimmers, but if you're a Winnemac wrestling coach, please send us your stuff. We'd we'd love to talk about you on this on this show. Okay, because you know conference is coming up. Uh, what a little over two weeks at Triton. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, got a couple minutes here. Anything else? The floor is yours, Val. Uh, let's see here. Uh, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um. Random thoughts with Val. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just, yeah, th- boy, holiday tournament week. That that was just a lot of fun. But I'm just glad it happens once a year, right? Because we went to f- four four holiday tournaments in four days on the 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th. That was, whew, that was a lot of bad. I mean, yeah, it was great because you see a lot of different varieties and styles of play. But that was pretty exhausting. <laughs> Yeah, from the yeah. Kitchen Classic to the Miami County to the uh, small school. I know you went to that. Yeah. Uh, I, I would have loved to have seen, gone to the Valley Girls Tournament at Carroll, but unfortunately we had the Valley Boys game against Rochester. I would love to go to, on the C, to the Wawa Sea Boys Tournament. I wanted to see Fort Wayne Wayne play. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, again, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I think, um, you know, Coach Burris was so – he was emotional after that because he talked about the relationships that he's had with his players, and that's what it's all about, you know. And, and and the relationships we get to develop with the coaches and the kids too. We talk about the narrative in a basketball season about how you you follow them along and you you get to know them real well. And of course, a lot of these kids we get to know them basically ten months a year because they go from whether it's volleyball to basketball to softball or yeah. football to ba- football to basketball to baseball. It's yeah. those relationships that we build with the kids that it just makes it so much fun. Yeah, and it's crazy to think, you know, we just turned into January of uh, the new year, but, you know, by the end of this month, we're going to have girls' basketball sectionals. Yeah. I mean, the season is, you know, two-thirds yeah. of the way, you know, almost over at this point. And mm-hmm. we're going to be talking sectional draws coming up in a couple weeks, yeah. you know, so. Well, Steve, let's talk about football. 
that Tippecanoe Valley will play Hammond Morton in week three next year okay. at home. Yeah, yeah. First three games of the year for Valley at home next year. Home with Wawa C, Bell game, home with Hammond Morton. Mm-hmm. And then they'll play five out of six on the road. Yeah, their conference schedule is not too good as far as home and away. Right, they only have one home conference game yeah. in the INSC. They'll be the John Glenn game in week eight. Yeah. Uh, and they got to go to, to Bremen in week nine, which will be interesting because it, uh, I think Bremen was fairly young la- uh, last year. So, yeah, again, we don't know what this Valley team is going to look like. They have a lot of different players. That, you, know, you lose Nate Parker and Wade Jones and Cody Eastgate and yeah. Dalton Albert. It's going to be a different-looking team, but I'm – I think they'll be a pretty decent team, whatever they, whoever they put out there. Yeah, seem to be a pretty good they, pipeline coming up. Yeah, they got a lot of good depth. A lot, you know, kids you know, like Styles and Hart will be pr- very good. But yeah, and Caston's first game next year at Carroll, hmm. whereas Caston got knocked out of the sectional by Carroll. Yeah, last year, so make a return trip to Flora. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, you're looking. You talk about the New Valley Conference with the Indiana Northern State Conference, but. The uh, the TRC is going to look different with with North Miami leaving, and then you've got Northwestern coming in. Right. I talked with Coach Schaefer. I know I know Rochester is playing Northwestern next year. Yeah. So. Yeah. So will that be the North Miami week? Do you think, or will that be moved well, around? Maybe? I was curious because Rochester did not play North Miami last year. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why. I, that's why I asked. I wonder who they're dropping. So. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and then of course with uh, with the Hoosier North. You know, with North Miami coming in, and then you've got South Central right. becoming a member of the Hoosier North for football only. So right, everybody's and everybody in the Hoosier North is playing two non-conference games in weeks one and two. Right. So I think the South Central, on like Culver schedule, Culver South Central, Culver South Central has played week one, moved from week two to week four, I think, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So who's Culver's week one? Well, actually, uh, they've been playing Judson week one a couple last couple of years. Yeah. So they'll have to. Uh, yeah, be interesting to see. So, yeah, they're all playing non-conference one and two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which means the Winnemac West Central game next year will be week, I think week two or something like that. Yeah. 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 It's gonna be curious to see, and we're really looking forward to that. But we got a lot of stuff to go before we get there. Yeah, we're thinking about it. Yeah, we're thinking about uh, softball practice starting in a well, over two and, months. And Josh was uh, going over the the new baseball schedule coming out, so uh, he's already getting ready for baseball season. Mm-hmm. So. All right, that's going to do it. We'll wrap it up. We'll be back next week. We'll talk some more sports with Val. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.